Howdy, friends. Welcome to 50's Cheese. My name is Clem, and the boss sent me out here to the garage to show you these movies, since he's embarrassed to be seen with them. What we have here are highlights of cheap old movies that don't really have highlights, uh, but just some scenes that aren't quite as bad as others. And since Misery Loves Company, I'll be joining you in watching them. Only, I'll be commenting on them as well. Well, you can too, only nobody will hear you. They usually won't be quite the full movie. There are often long and boring scenes that I'll cut, and they're not all actually from the 50s, but they are in spirit. So, with all that in mind, let's watch the movie. A while back, March 2024 to be precise, we viewed a cheap Italian science fiction movie called Battle of the Worlds. We now present Assignment Outer Space from the same director, screenwriter, and cinematographer. And this was done one year before that. Battle of the Worlds had a slightly better story, and it had Claude Rains. This one has no one of any importance. They both share a lot of pseudo-scientific gobbledygook, as do many other cheap science fiction movies of that period. We'll be discussing some of it at the end. I will, anyway, since none of you people can be bothered to actually watch a full video. of a radio taped report of an exclusive feature story for the Planetary Chronicle of New York. Ray Peterson reporting. Dateline, December 17th, year 2116. Spaceship Bravo Zulu 88. Destination Galaxy M12. Assignment Outer Space. Nice to see somebody finally got it right. You need multi-stage rockets to get off the Earth. They got the separations too close together, the but he can't have everything. Me to cover a routine check of infraradiation flux I guess infraradiation flux could mean something like infrared radiation. To a 1960 screenwriter, it might have made sense to refer to Messier Object 12 as Galaxy M12, if they even knew about it. The real M12, sometimes known as the Gumball Globular Cluster, is some 23,000 light years from Earth, at the impossible 90,000 miles per hour speed the ship is traveling at, as is mentioned a bit later. That works out to taking 175,000 years to get there. Good luck. The crew members, in order to overcome the earthly gravitation, have been subjected to a state of hibernation. That is, the human body had put through a congealing process simulating an apparent death. A congealing process? They made jello out of the crew? Time, under the impulses of an electric brain, the heart resumes its normal beat. The lungs begin their regular functioning. The blood flowing evenly again. In short, man is reacquiring his earthly faculties. Okay, I promise. Well, I about 90% promise. Not to go on and on about all the nonsensical pseudoscientific gibberish they spout. To paraphrase the MST3K theme song, if I wonder about science facts, I'll say to myself, it's just a show. 
It's just a cheap Italian science fiction movie, and I should relax. Right after this. This is the third time we've been shown a gauge showing wow percentage. This is a meter and a measurement that would be found only on a high-end, professional-grade tape recorder. And the other controls and meters that register dBs, uh, decibels are a measure of sound pressure, of loudness. These would also be found on that tape recorder. Okay, now I'll be good. the state of weightlessness caused by lack of gravitation special magnetic boots are provided to control the balance magnetic of the soled travelers. boots that's a great idea no mucking about with trying to explain artificial gravity fields and silliness like that while the crew and i were still in a state of hibernation the engineer pilot, Al, reported our approach to international satellite Zulu Extra 3-4. Bravo Zulu 8-8 calling Zulu Extra 3-4. Bravo Zulu 8-8 calling Zulu Extra 3-4. Over. Zulu Extra 3-4 to Bravo Zulu 8-8. Go ahead. Contact established. Hibernation period finished. Over. Is that you, Al? Hi, Richard. Any news to relay? The usual nausea when awakening, my boy. Bravo Zulu 88 has entered orbit of your satellite. Bravo Zulu 88 closing electronic brain. Over. Roger. Everything's in your hands again, Al. Uh, thanks for nothing, pal. Hey, we got cargo aboard. We've already been informed. Reporter, eh? Did he wake up yet? No, not yet. I haven't brought him his coffee. Bravo Zulu 88 requesting your position. Al's Board running five, everything two, one, over. just by waving okay. his fingers over that box. I'll send you the report. What wonders await us Bravo in the future? Zulu 88 closing. Hello, Archie. How are you feeling? Man, this time I had a dream. You had a dream? What about? I dreamt I was sleeping. Take over the controls while I wake up the baby. Bravo Zulu 88 calling extra 34. Over. Go ahead, Bravo Zulu 88. Wakey, wakey. state of hibernation is an eerie sensation. I didn't know who or where I was until I heard Al's voice. Hi there, spaceman. Hello. This was not my first space flight. Previous assignments for my newspaper had sent me to the moon many times, but never into the vast reaches of deep space. I feared that ten days in a cramped ship with a crew of seven men who would resent a reporter's questions and lack of usefulness might make me an unpopular passenger. And I was right. The coffin was much too small. Where are we now? Outside. Outside what? Outside everything. Breakfast is served. Bravo, Zulu. You're directly in line with us. We'll send you that reporter as soon as possible. Hey, Al, they're asking for the boy. Hey, hey, Al! Al, what's happening? We're off to bad start. Calm down, my boy. You'll get along fine. Just control your nerves. There. From now on, you'll be able to hear my instructions. Just remember to regulate your volume knob. I'm not going to take all the air out of the decompression chamber. You'll have an easier exit. I'll give you a count from 20 to 1. 
out you go. I know what to do. Son, you don't know anything yet. Don't touch the metal frame around the hatch. Minus 20. Why? Can you see me? No. But the first time out, they all behaved the same way. Minus 15. India Zulu 4-1. You ready? Five, four, three. Wait a second. Two, one. Out you go. Al was absolutely right. I was scared. Ah! Don't the do that! The satellite is like an island in the sky. In order not to disturb its calculated orbital chart, we lined up 2,000 feet parallel to it. The only way to get there was to float through the terrifying void between us. India Zulu 4-1, get back to normal position. You're at the end of your trip. Once aboard Zulu Extra 3-4, I passed through the decompression chamber. I now regained my normal weight because the gravitational area was similar to our Earth's. The reason for this... Oh, uh, they came so close. Rotate around a central axis. They got the concept right, then blew the implementation. That pseudo-gravity is called centrifugal force and it acts outward from the axis of rotation. Ray would be pressed against the outer wall and not free to move about the way he is. Go watch 2001 later. They got it right. <sighs> Just relax. Just relax. In the ship's cabin, I was met by King 116, the doctor in charge of all crew members' physical and mental health. Take off your space suit and report to the commander. He's waiting for you. Special correspondent Ray Peterson reporting to the commander. I've heard you're rather famous on Earth. Well, I see my fame has reached the star. But let me give you a bit of advice. Here among the stars, it is better not to be quite so cocky. You are only here to do a job. Don't worry, that's all I intend to do. On condition that you don't interfere with ours. You've arrived here at a critical moment. So much the better. <laughs> Peace and tranquility don't have any news value. Sullivan. Yes, sir? How long would it take to reinstall the terminal stages to the spaceship that arrived from Earth just now? That all depends, sir. We only have two mechanics on board. Cancel all rest periods. The ship must be ready as soon as possible. I must go to base 12 on Mars. Yes, sir. You talk about Mars as if it were just down the street. There are no streets here. I firmly oppose your unwelcome visit. Are you trying to flatter me? But the high command refused to listen to me. It's apparent that you have quite a pull there. Not me, but my organization has. Don't forget, Peterson, that everything you put on your tape recorder will have to be sent by me before it's sent back to Earth. Here, everything is regulated by machines. You'll find that things are very different here. You may go now. Later on, you'll be shown to your quarters. Hoping this special detail might make a good story, I went outside, without permission, to observe and photograph it. This special detail was a refueling operation, one of the most dangerous and delicate operations in space flight. The engineers carried an enormous tube from the space station and carefully attached it to a rear valve on our ship. Thousands of gallons of precious neohydrazine were being pumped into our fuel tanks in order for us to go on to Mars. 
Was that hydrozine or hydrazine? One's a rocket fuel and one's an antihistamine. Better not get them mixed up. Neohydrazine, as far as I can find, doesn't exist. At least not yet. But we still have 92 years to invent it. Look out! The meteorite! Suddenly, I saw a fiery ball racing toward the cosmonaut next to me. Nibbly, I pushed him out of the way. But the subsequent reaction caused me to bounce against the connection of the fuel valve, disconnecting it and letting their irreplaceable neohydrazine escape. Close the fuel valve! And here's where I have to break my promise. There has never been a screenwriter in the history of motion pictures who knew what meteors, meteoroids, and meteorites are and how they behave. The scene as shown and described here is utterly and totally 100% impossible. I'll explain later in the wrap-up. Uh, now he has to talk to the boss. Gallons of yeah, he's far too arrogant to let that bother him. But don't worry. By the end, they ha Sorry. will have begun to understand each other. It's, it's, it's kind of an unwritten rule. I said I'm sorry, even though I saved a man's life. You didn't come here to be a hero. The damage you have just caused is much more serious than the mere loss of a life. Evidently, Commander, my way of thinking must seem prehistoric to you. I thought nothing was worse than the loss of a human being. But then I only saved a number. Yankee won three. I didn't even see his face. Maybe he hasn't got one. I knew that you were going to give me trouble. I see you're a psychologist, too. Now, look here, Peterson. Let's get this straight. From now on, you must ask permission for everything you do. And you won't ask me for it. That's an improvement. You'll have to ask my second in command. And I'm afraid you'll find that he's tougher than I am. You may go now. You may go. First, Commander, tell me one thing. Why do you deny me the honor of talking to you? I'm leaving, Peterson. Buddy. I'm King 116. Pardon me for not having called you by name. Allow me. India Zulu 41. What do you want? I'm looking for someone. Excuse me, I'm looking for a number. Yankee 13. He was injured. He should be around here somewhere. Just dismissed. It was nothing but simple shock. Have a look in the biochemical lab. Please excuse my curiosity, Mr. King 116. Now, this isn't a scientific issue, but the correct international phonetic alphabet for K is Kilo, not in? King. Hey, spaceman. 24 out of the remaining 25 letters they got right. I'll let you guess what that uh, 25th one is. Are you addressing me? Yes, but you're a... Go on. You're a girl. And you're oh, selling flowers. Oh, so you noticed. There are no flowers here. These are diaspora. Even with a name like that, they're flowers. They serve the purpose of changing hydrogen into breathable oxygen, and they're as necessary here. Change hydrogen air. into oxygen? But I still say... What? They're flowers. Just relax. Like. Just relax. Them? Plants can, I'm through photosynthesis, you. break but down carbon here. dioxide into oxygen and various carbon you compounds. You won't have to send them anyway. Clover can convert one form of nitrogen them. to but another. I'll leave them here. But not even the CERN Large Hadron Collider can convert one in element into another. Sometimes. But I'm really a navigator. When I'm not working with the Astro Compass, I like to substitute for the section chemist. But tell me, why do you want to offer them to me? 
Oh, no particular reason, just to celebrate the second smiling face I've run into. Al's was the first. Now I find you. Speaking of you, what's your name? I don't mean your numbers, serials, codes, but just your name. Lucy. Lucy. You like it? Ah, uh, Lucy in the bad. sky with diaspora. My uncle had a mascot. No, it's not worth the effort. It was quite cute. I liked it very much. It was a monkey. Thank you. No, really. She was very cute. I meant it as a compliment. Very flattering, Mr. Peterson. Do you know my name, too? Of course. I've already heard about you from George. You know, the commander. My old friend. But doesn't the commander have a number, like everybody else? Not for me. And now, if you'll forgive me, I've got work to do. Yankee won three. I forgot. Thank you, Ray. I really mean it. Thanks. Following the order from the commander, Al came over to our ship to pilot a space taxi from which I could photograph a passage of asteroids. Oh, once they mentioned meteorites, I knew it was just a matter of time before they got around the asteroids. Interesting action shot of your career. Yeah, shooting these rocks is sure something. They're not rocks, my son. They're asteroids. Each of them 1,700 feet in diameter. We'll uh, add this to the science the lesson at the end of the, the movie. Of 500 gallons of hydrazine when I saved a life. And the girls, too. Ah, so you have a weakness for the weakest thing. And she doesn't even call him sir, just George. Okay, now listen up. Again, this movie is too long to deal with in one piece. There needs to be two more sections. But this can only happen with your cooperation. If there is sufficient response to this video, I'll continue. If I get the usual amount of apathy, I'll move on to something else more fulfilling. Dismissed.